Glendale Tower to Pan American Trip 7. Wind East 7. Altimeter setting 29.92. You're clear to land on runway number 2. Pan American Trip 7 to Glendale Tower. Wilco. The controls of an airplane are elementary. When you push the stick forward, the nose drops. When you pull the stick back, the nose comes up. Company attention. Captain Allen. Wings for defense, wings for commerce. The symbol of our world of today, September 7th, 1941. It's a pathetically contradictory world of streamlined speed and heartbreaking strife, of achievement and destructive war. But the symbol for both war and achievement is the airplane. And the airplane is also a symbol for the great modern city of Glendale, California, one of the aviation centers for the globe-circling airlines, for training flyers for the Army and Navy, for Canada and the RAF. Yet, only a hundred years ago, this great area of factories and homes was undreamed of. Where Flintridge, Eagle Rock, Highland Park, Occidental College, Garvanza now lie, the lofty mountains stood silent sentinel over vast solitudes of waving grain fields and pasture lands. It was the Rancho San Rafael. Let's go back through the years and relive the romance of the ranchos. Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, dramatizing the romance and adventure connected with the growth of this great state. Each week at this time, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, uncovers another fascinating story of events and people who built the land we know today as Southern California. And here is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Our story tonight is one I know you will enjoy, selected from the vast files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. You see, it's the business of this company to know the history of our Southland. Yes, the vast historical files of this company of necessity contain detailed records, available nowhere else in such accessible form, of California's glamorous past, back to the earliest Spanish land grants one of the first of which was Rancho San Rafael. Each week, for your enjoyment, we recreate from these records a true story, replete with the drama, gaiety, and tragedy, romance and hatred, triumph and disaster, that so filled the colorful transition period from the days of the Dones and the Gold Rushes to the present time. Our story tonight is a fascinating one, set in the fertile section of Southern California, which became one of the first of the great ranchos. Rancho San Rafael. The years drop away as we go back, searching. 1930, 1920, 1910, 1905. Wait. Let us stop here just a moment. 1904. 1904 was a big year for Glendale, even though the town had not become a city as yet. For it was that year... Here it comes now. Here comes the first car. Yep, that's right. Here it is. It's rounding the bend. And just think, man, that car will take us into Los Angeles in less than an hour. Uh, yes, and it takes three at least in the spring wagons. Well, I guess it's time to start proceedings. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen. Now, folks, folks, quiet, please. I'm going to ask the man who is chiefly responsible for this great event to drive the last spike in the rails. So step up here, Mr. L.C. Brand. Well, thank you. Thank you, folks. This is a great day for Glendale, and no one will be any happier than I will to see that car roll up here. <laughs> here you are, sir. Now, pound her in. All right, boys. Stand back. Yeah, stand back, yeah. That's it. That's it, Mr. Brand. <laughs> <laughs> well, there it is. You can give the car the signal now. All right, boys. Bring her in. There she is. The Pacific Electric is here. Dr. James, no, 
Dr. James. Yes, what is it, Dora? Come quickly, it's Father. He's dying. You mean Verdugo? Yes, yes, of course, I'll come. Hurry, hurry. As the people of Glendale welcomed the future, the past was slipping away from them. For on his deathbed lay Theodore Verdugo, respected citizen, one of the last of the Dones. And with him, time wrote the final chapter in the story of the great Rancho San Rafael. Doctor, can't anything be done? I'm sorry, my dear. Oh, Papacito. Oh, my child. You must not cry. I leave you the good name of Verdugo. If I left you nothing else, you would be rich. Honor it, keep it high, where it has always been. And this land, the Rancho San Rafael, even though it belongs to others now, do what you can to make it a fine place for people to live. That is what my grandfather, Don Jose Maria, would have wished. He loved the Rancho San Rafael. Yes, I am. Papacito. <laughs> yes, Teodoro Verdugo loved the Rancho San Rafael, as had his father and his grandfather before him. It was from that love of the land that burned in the heart of Jose Maria Verdugo that the Rancho San Rafael was first formed. But we must go back farther through the years to find that story. It was on one lovely sun-filled day in the 1770s that Corporal Jose Maria Verdugo, in the service of His Majesty the King of Spain, rode over the land across which ran the old road to Monterey, a portion of which is still called Monterey Road. With him was another young soldier, and they were returning to the mission San Gabriel, where they were stationed. Well, Jose, now maybe you don't like being a soldier so much. How do I not, Carlos? Ah, sending us out into this wilderness, this desert. What are we to do? It isn't so bad at the mission. We are busy keeping the Indians in order, and, and we have adventure. But why do we have to leave San Diego? Think of the times we could have had there, the fiestas and the senoritas. Ah, the senoritas. There are no senoritas in San Gabriel. Ah. Yeah, what you should do is get married and settle down. See. Si. A fine chance I have here. Uh, too bad. You should get married and settle down, too. Oh, 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 not me. I'm a soldier, and I like it. I stay a soldier. Ah, but one of these days, a lovely senorita, and <laughs> you'll be tired of this life. Never. But I tell you, Carlos, if I ever did decide to settle down somewhere and get married, I do not think I could find a better spot than right here. Stop a minute. Look up it. Oh, here, <laughs> chapel. Oh, uh, chapel. Oh, just look at the vista, the mountains and the green valley and the trees. See, it's very pretty. Oh, very pretty. It's beautiful. See. Here, yeah, what's this? Jose, a party of travelers coming down the road. Yeah, it's good land too, Carlos. It would make a very fine rancho. See, near the mountains are streams. There will be fish. And there, over there you could raise corn and grapes and pumpkins for food. And there in the distance is pasture land for cattle. Jose, look, there's a senorita. A senorita? Yes, see, si, riding with the party. Look. See, si, so it is. Accompanied by two gentlemen and a padre. See, si, and she is. Madre mio, she is beautiful. See. Si. Buenos dias, senorita. Buenos dias, senor Cabral. May we be of service? No, gracias, senor. Our journey is almost over. I'm quite safe, gracias. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Ah, what a lovely face and such a smile she gave me. I thought that the sun had just come up. Ah, perhaps this desert does have at least one oasis in it, eh, Jose? Ah, she was lovely. You noticed it too, huh? Then I know she was truly beautiful. I wonder what could her name be? Huh? Oh, <laughs> Jose, you old soldier. So you could never be charmed by a senorita, huh? <laughs> Well, my friend, perhaps you were wrong. 
Perhaps that look in your eye is love, no? Perhaps the great Jose Maria Verdugo has been struck at last. <laughs> And Jose Maria Verdugo was struck at last. He wooed and won for his bride the beautiful young daughter of Ignacio Lopez, Maria de la Encarnacion. And they were married to San Gabriel Mission. And now Jose had definite ideas about his future. One day, as he returned from his duties, his wife, Maria, called. Jose? Jose? A writer brought a message for you. A message for me? See? Si? And it's from the governor, Don Pedro Vargas. The governor? Oh, then he's come. It's here. What's come? What is it, Jose? It is news I've been waiting for. Give it to me. No. Jose Verdugo, before another minute, you must tell me what you have to do with the governor. You've been keeping something from me. <laughs> See, Maria, I have. But it's just because I wanted to surprise you. My little dog. Come here. There. Now, what would you like best to have? You, Jose? No, 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 no. I mean, besides my ugly face. Well, perhaps a little one and a home of our own. See, that is it. I, too, want a home for you and the little ones that will soon be. And so I have laid my plans. Plans? What plans, Jose? Do you remember the day you first saw me, riding on El Camino Viejo? Si. I was with the padre and you with Carlos. Uh, si. And do you remember the land, the beautiful valley, which we could see from there? Si. That is where I want our home to be. Oh, Jose, it would be... it would be paradise. Oh, si, paradise. And so I've asked the governor to let me keep some cattle on that land. If he says yes... Then I can send my brother to build a house and start a rancho. And then later, when it is established, the governor cannot help but allow us to make our home there. It will be ours. So you see, already our home is started. But Jose, suppose the governor refused. Eh? Oh, no, he could not do it. I don't think he could. Miriam, give me the letter. See, si, here. Uh, I'd better open it, huh? Eh? See, si, go ahead. Yes, I, I will open it. <laughs> Read it. What does it say? Uh, it says, uh, I concede to the petitioner the permission he solicits to keep his cattle and horses. Oh, and... Maria, do you hear it? says, I concede to the petitioner the permission he solicits. It's ours, Maria. It's ours. <laughs> And so in 1784, the Rancho San Rafael was started, even though it still belonged to the King of Spain. But Jose Verdugo had his heart set on owning the rancho. And so, 15 years later, in 1799, he took his second step. Gabriel Verdugo. Well, see, si, see, si, senor. I'm coming. Oh, I'm coming as fast as I can. Uh, you wanted me, senor? See, si. How do you feel, Corporal? Oh, not very well, senor. My back, it aches. And the dropsy, you know, of course... How I suffer from the dropsy. I know. You haven't ridden out on any patrols for a long time, Corporal. Oh, no, no. I cannot ride. That is well known. Oh, I suffer terribly on a horse. But I keep busy around the mission, senor. I am not useless, you understand. Perhaps not, Verdugo, but you have petitioned the governor to be released. Uh, see, si, so that I may retire to my rancho, San Rafael. Well, Corporal Verdugo, I'm pleased to tell you that the governor has granted your petition. You're free to go to live on your rancho any time. What? Senor, you, you mean that... Madre de Dios. It's wonderful news. Wonderful. I must go and tell Maria. I must go and tell her right but away. But Verdugo, wait, Verdugo. What are you doing? That's a horse you're climbing on. I must tell you, Senor. I must tell you. But you can't ride anymore. You have dropsy. Yes, Senor. But, Senor, come back. That's my horse you're riding off with. <laughs> Austin, away, you go, Senor. And so, 157 years ago, was established the beginning of the first valid title to Rancho San Rafael. At that point, start the records of the Title Insurance and Trust Company. Each time Rancho San Rafael, or any part of it, changed hands, one or more legal recordings were filed. Similar mountains of documents loom in the background of every piece of land bought or sold in California today. The reason title company records must go back to the very beginning and include every transaction up to the present day, is that land titles are like a chain. They're only as strong as their weakest link. If any title is defective, all subsequent ones may be faulty too. It is the task of the title insurance company
to seek out each of these records, establish beyond reasonable doubt its authenticity, assemble them where they're always available, to the end that when you buy property, you will really become its owner, and to ensure your interest in the land against another's claim based on some undetected forgery, forgotten mortgage loan, undisclosed heirs, or other ghost from the past. early California years rolled on, Jose grew old, and his sons and daughters grew up on Rancho San Rafael. 36,000 acres of fertile plain, rolling woodland, and magnificent mountains. This was his domain, the Rancho San Rafael. He built its houses, farmed its lands, dammed its streams, raised its cattle, turned it into the paradise he dreamed of. And then suddenly one day, while Jose was riding, he came upon a scene that struck his heart with horror. What is this? What has happened? These Indians are invading our rancho. They have already built huts and corrals. Oh, but Julio, you're burning them. See, of course. We're chasing them off our land, back across the rail. Oh, Hondo. but you must not do that. They might be hurt. Stop, Vaquero, stop. It is I, Don Jose. Stop this at once. But, Papa, they do not belong here. This is our land. We thought it was our land. But that is no reason for killing and destroying. But if we do not chase them off, they might take all our land piece by piece. Others would come. Yeah, and I would rather give them the land, all the land I own. And have this happen. Julio, I am disappointed. Distressed that you, ever do go, should do such a thing. Well, I'm sorry, Papa. I only thought I was doing the right thing. That we should show them that this is ours, we mean business. My son, the boundaries have never been very clear, and we cannot even be sure that this is our land. If these Indians are from San Gabriel, the new padre told them to settle here, and we, we must go to the padre and apologize. No! These are renegade Indians from the hills who rob us. And they mission too. Even so, Julio, we must defend what is ours peacefully. We must hold our neighbor's respect and not his hatred. The law will take care of us, my boy. Law? There is no law, except our own. I shall go to the governor. He has always been my friend. He will uphold our claims. And when he does, no one shall ever again try to trespass on Rancho San Rafael. <laughs> When the governor of California upheld Jose's petition and ordered the padres off the land, the Verdugo claim to the Rancho San Rafael was clear. And a few years later, when the old soldier, Jose Maria Verdugo, passed on to his other paradise, the great rancho was left to his son, Julio, his daughter, Catalina. Life was rich and peaceful at San Rafael, but soon the faint reverberations of great events penetrated the solitude. Armies were on the march. The American armies of Commodore Stockton and Captain Fremont marched through the ranch lands from the mountains to the sea. Battles were fought, and the Americans swept on. Finally, the defenders knew their cause was lost. In 1847, Stockton occupied Los Angeles in the south. Fremont's forces were closing in from the north. The last little band of caballeros under the command of Andres Pico made their camp in the shadows of the Verdugos on Rancho San Rafael. They were well aware that Fremont's forces had reached Cahuenga Pass and were prepared to do battle with them the next day. But that night, a prisoner was marched in and placed before General Carrillo. Buenos dias, General Carrillo. Patre de Dios. Jesus Pico. You are the prisoner. I am not a prisoner. I came here of my own free will. Tell this man to release me. Release him. You may go. Come in. There are men here who will be glad to see you. I shall be glad to see them. After you, senor. Gracias, general. Is Jesus my brother? See, si, you brother. Deliver himself up. He has realized his mistake at last. It is not I who have made the mistake. It is you. I have it, you shall learn. Please. And there are prisoner has to say. I am not the prisoner, You are the prisoners. You are surrounded. Your men deserted. You cannot fight any longer. We shall die fighting. Uh, see, see, a noble sentiment, General Carrillo. But so useless. There is no need to die. There has been enough of that already. Senores, 
Your cause is hopeless. See? Yeah. What he says is all too true. Oh, what he said. Senores, forget that I am what you call a traitor. Remember that I love this land as much as you. That is why I can ask you now. Give up. Surrender. Eva, that is all very well. But then what happens to us? So that is what I have been sent to tell you. Nothing. Nothing. You call Stockton's terms nothing. I care nothing about Stockton's terms. I bring terms from Fremont. Fremont? And what are they? Simply that you surrender. Give up fighting. Give up fighting. After that, we can all return to our homes. Everything will be as before. You mean none of us will be arrested? Our lands can't be skinned? No, no, nothing. You can go home just as before. This is not a trick. I swear it. Why should they want to trick us? They need our help in building this great country. They need us as much as we need them. We need them. Oh, see, see, we uh. have been backward here. The world has moved on ahead of us. The Americanos go with it. They even lead it. They can make California a great part of the world instead of a backward corner. If you love your country, then you will welcome the Americanos. See, I believe he's right. Say it, Verdugo. I'm sorry. I should not have spoken. But you must, my friend. This is for all of us to decide. Well, I'm not fighting with you. But I love California just as much as my father, Jose, did. Just as you do. And I believe we owe it to this land to, to make it the great country it can be. And besides, strife and bitterness never build anything. They only tear down. We must keep ourselves respectable and honorable. We cannot do that by violence. There is much wisdom there. See, si. Then you will send men to Cahuenga Pass to talk to Fremont? See, si. I think so. Carillo, si. you, Senor Alvero, and I will go, and perhaps... Perhaps this will be the beginning and not the end of California. And so California became a part of the United States. Once again, all of the Southland was as peaceful as the Rancho San Rafael. Don Julio's title to the land was recognized by the United States. But there were new problems for the ranch of San Rafael. 36,000 acres of ranch land too fertile, of acreage too invitingly close to the growing metropolis. Its days were numbered. One day, Julio Verdugo received a visitor. Si, come in. Senor Verdugo. Si, come in. Senor, I'm the sheriff. Si, I know. Won't you sit down? May I get a glass of wine? No, thanks. Gracious. I'd rather get this over with. Of course. Senor, you've borrowed money. Mortgage this place. See, I, I have for $3,445. But that was a long time ago. Almost nine years ago, to be exact. You agreed to pay 3% interest a month. Long ago, the interest was foreclosed, and the judgment returned against you for almost $16,000. That is still unpaid. I know. I am sorry. But do you realize how much you owe now with that interest rate? It is much, isn't it? It's almost $59,000. But I... I can hardly think of so much money. I'm sorry. I'm afraid there's nothing left to do but show you this. Oh, gracias, senor. What is it? It's my order to put up for public sale your Rancho San Rafael. first of the great ranchos, the land that Jose Maria Verdugo saw and loved, the beautiful domain that dazzled the traveler's eye, was no more. On the sheriff's auction block, its acres were chopped into a hundred parcels, and the way was clear for the growth of towns and villages, of factories and homes. Taking shape were Glendale, Highland Park, Eagle Rock, Garvanza, and Flintridge. Business sprang up overnight. The boom was on. The Pacific Electric connected Glendale with Los Angeles, and the population grew. 1910. 2,700. 1920. 13,500. 
1930, 62,700. 1940, 81,700. Glendale, the fastest growing city in the United States. Glendale, driving metropolis, aviation center, hub of activity for the surrounding valley. And on the spot where today is heard... Pan American Trip 7, all aboard for Mexico City, Canal Zone, Rio de Janeiro, Buenos Aires, and Santiago. On the spot where Britain's RAF is being trained. Dive straight for the target, 200 feet trip your bomb release. Over all this land, where factories hum, traffic roars, and the business of the streamlined modern world is conducted, just 100 years ago stood the great Rancho San Rafael. Such is the romance of the ranchos. Our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, has narrated another of the fascinating stories of the romance of the ranchos, taken from the files of the Title Insurance and Trust Company. When you sell a lot, a home, or a ranch, or when you borrow money on such property, your purchaser or your bank or other financial institution requires the protection of title insurance. The purpose of this insurance, of course, is to protect both you and the buyer or the lender to ensure the validity of the ownership which you are transferring. Your deed, which you execute or receive, does not provide such insurance. Well, every day in Los Angeles County alone, an average of 1,500 legal documents are recorded which can affect the validity of titles to real estate. These documents include death certificates, divorce decrees, wills filed for probate, mortgages, trust deeds, and scores of others. Forged signatures or signatures by minors or incompetents are among still other risks to land titles. To insure a title, your title company must check the files of more than 50 different public offices to locate and examine all these recordings. It then ensures the completeness and accuracy of this work. So when you pay for a policy of title insurance, remember first that it's your protection against loss, and second, that it represents a great volume of detailed work by experts. Title insurance can be priced so low only because of the large organization and vast files which the title insurance and trust company has built up through the years. Well, what's the story for next week, Frank? Under the earth lay a great pool of liquid gold, oil. But long before it was discovered, this land around Santa Fe Springs was a place of romance and glamour, and it has a story packed with drama. Until next week, then, this is your wandering vaquero saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, featuring Frank Graham as the wandering vaquero, is brought to you each week at the same time by the Title Insurance and Trust Company. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>